Within the last three years, around 321,000 acres of land burned in the wildfires in Greece. This is about five times the spread of Athens. Floods, storms and heat waves have taken over 150,000 lives in Europe over the last five decades. The entire Mediterranean is a climate change hotspot because the region is warming much faster than the global average. Mediterranean countries such as Greece are now starting to experience tropical weather. People not only suffering economically, uh, but also uh, we had the people that uh, lost their lives. Therefore, I think it is very important to act now. In Attica, the rural area surrounding Athens, there are numerous regions that face high climate risk. About 25 kilometers northeast of Athens is Penteli. This municipality has experienced repeated wildfires. The most recent one was in July 2022. It was an unpleasant event, which started from the mountain and had a terrible wind. Nevertheless, there were many firefighters and it was handled as best as it could by the state apparatus. These regions in Attica do not have the economic means or capacity to adapt to future catastrophes. They are still recovering from previous damage. Here, immediate help is needed. Though climate change affects everyone, some populations are more vulnerable than others. For example, water scarcity may cause a person living in the city some discomfort, but it will cost a farmer his livelihood. Socioeconomic data such as wealth, employment rates and infrastructure of a region defines its adaptability or vulnerability to climate change. When vulnerable populations reside in areas with high climate risk, these regions are called hotspots. The government's aim is clear, to build a future where precaution is favoured over damage control. But how can they find and prioritise these regions nationwide? Locating these hotspots will soon be done by the Hotspot Explorer. This online tool has been developed by stakeholders from the EU project Impetus. It functions as an interactive map that combines climate data from satellites with information about the population, thus highlighting the areas which do not have the means to cope with climate risk. The bottleneck in database decisions was unavailability of data. Data resided in hard disks, in ministries and, and uh, universities such as this one. Now, over the past few years, uh, things have moved a lot. The collection of these types of information, the socioeconomic bottom-up information, if you like, has become more widespread. Within the context of the Impetus project, researchers predict that the region of Attica will experience prolonged heat waves. Temperatures here are to reach an average of 35 degrees Celsius within the next 50 years. As this region is in the Mediterranean, all future projections also show reduced rainfall. Hotter and drier summers are a breeding ground for wildfires. Even though some of the forest fire cases may be due to arson, climate change will accelerate the accumulation of dry, flammable material in the forests. This will allow the fires to spread quicker. We are taking all necessary measures in order to bring this area back to where it was before this disaster. We have a national afforestation plan that concerns almost 180,000 acres all over Greece for the next three years, which is a huge area. Forestration is especially important in the mountains of Attica. The repeated wildfires have left the mountains barren. Vegetation is no longer present to absorb and retain the rainfall. This greatly increases the risk of floods and mud flow. The municipality of Mandra, which was hit by flash floods in 2017, is another recovering hotspot. For certain residents, the disaster has left lasting economic and emotional impact. 
In November 2022, five years later, a long-time resident of Mandra has finally managed to remove the rubble from his home. We were afraid. We opened the pathway here, where you can enter, because the water couldn't escape to the outside, and it was full with mud. Just like in autumn 2023, when 16 people lost their lives as flash floods hit central Greece, this November flood in Attica caused 25 deaths and rendered hundreds of people homeless. It was really a shocking situation for anyone who experienced it here, because at first we didn't quite understand the extent of the disaster. It's November and we're still in short sleeves. What worries me most is that in addition to the problem we have had with the severe storms, the issue of fires continues. Nature can normally recover from fire disasters on its own, but the damages in Greece are so severe that the government has chosen to accelerate efforts in improving tree cover in non-forest areas as well. We take also forestation actions, because um, forests can play a role not only in adaptation measures and policies, but also in mitigation policies, because uh, they work as a natural sink. At the same time, the people residing in these high-risk climate zones need new policies and infrastructure to sustain themselves. For which the Greek government has a new climate law concerning mitigation and adaptation plans. They target carbon neutrality by 2050. A reduction of greenhouse gases by 55% and substitution of conventional fuels by renewable sources of energy is to be achieved by 2030. At the same time, the Hotspot Explorer will be instrumental in introducing new policies to support vulnerable populations. We fully support Impetus. We are the national partner, let's say, of Impetus. We want to see how they can become not only a pilot, as they are, but a national uh, program or a national investment. Currently, the Hotspot Explorer is at a better testing phase. In the future, it should be instrumental in making policies at the EU level. We have to act yesterday, not today. If we don't take immediately sustainability actions, um, there will be a great risk for mankind's survival.